Hunter x Hunter, episode 122, Pose X and X Name. It's an awkward car ride. It'd be cool if they talked. Oh, why does this remind me of Dragon Ball Z? Oh, is this finally the episode where we get Netero King? Cool. <laughs> okay, don't have to worry about casualties out here. Maybe, who knows, with their power levels. I have a really bad feeling about this. I don't think Netero's gonna come in here and just solo the king. Uh? <laughs> yeah, what? Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. Oh no. The king learned a lot from Sh Shogi. Gunji. Netero now feeling sort of like the king during the Gunji games. He's playing this 2D board game, but has already lost the 3D one. For some reason, I can't get over the absurdity of him wearing his favorite shirt for this. Like, he came out here in his favorite shirt to destroy a little girl and, and then just not feel like he's on the same level at all. Sort of sapped of the justification and motivation for being here. The energies are just a total mismatch. Netero's energy is like, this is a game. King's energy is, this is, this is real life. Why does the king seem so, so, so far ahead, so much more convicted? The king is so much more convincing when he talks, for some reason, having not even seen his full power. But I've grown. Just a couple. The one that you dragon carpet bombed in your favorite t-shirt. Oh, this is even worse. I don't even want to kill- I don't even want to fight you. Even after you, all you've done to me. Not even rage. Not even a sense of revenge. <laughs> Yeah, okay, that actually can, that does feel good for Netero. It's not an offer that you can accept. Okay, it's great that you've realized humans can be valuable. Can't leave the judgment of who lives and who dies among humanity to you, to any one person, no matter how kingly. That's not your decision to make. Coded communication. Yeah, ゴンが話を聞くことに集中するよう仕向ける狙いである。いや、ゴンちょっとなら<笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑><笑> Just in time to witness an ass kicking, probably. Am I underestimating Netero? I mean, I know he's a beast. Just, I don't know, just reading their. Just reading the situation, that's how I feel. Maybe we can discuss. <laughs> what do you want? What's your plan? Okay, so it's a utopia that we're building. It's really interesting. Oh, it's really tricky. It's really hard. I think when the king first started talking about ideal world, I mentioned that in some way it does seem like the, the best thing. Like if actually a, a really great world could stem from a single point of unequivocal power, that would be great. Two problems with that. That just does not happen. It's just not found in reality. Like at a certain point, you have to read what has happened and total lack of evidence of anything different being possible as just the way things are. Like how long do you use the excuse of, well, it just hasn't been done correctly yet. If only I were in charge, you know? And that gets even less likely to be possible as there are more people and things are more complex because just the, the fallout of cause and effect throughout any any system of sufficient complexity, which is not really that high of a, bar a barrier, has ripple consequences so powerful and severe that even things you think will be good end up being disastrous. The other is that even if it somehow were possible, you don't want to create a system of that much concentrated power, even if it temporarily goes well, because lifespans are limited and leaders are replaced. And given just the probability of someone being that amazing, it's inevitable that that kind of concentrated 
and powerful system will fall into the hands of someone who is not perfect and far from it. There can be a little bit of a folly or, or a mistake in thinking that the solution is to find the right person and give them all the power because again, very unlikely that they're that good. But even if they are, they won't be there forever. And what you're doing is you're giving power to someone who you don't know later. Personally, I believe it's much more important to fight for the health and integrity of a system rather than any individual or a person or a figure. No matter how much you love them, what a lot of utopian thinkers will find is that yes, all your points are valid. There are terrible things in the world and those should be fought against. We should apply our intelligence to them remotely, but also that for a lot of the biggest problems of humanity that we have not been able to stamp out, it probably means they are an unfortunate side effect of something that otherwise is really important and critical. Perhaps something that might even be benign in most cases, unless it's allowed to grow unchecked, like a cancer. Thinking directly about his example, what led to this dictatorship is probably on some level, initial level of support for that very thing, thinking it was in the best interest of society or oneself, and then it just got out of hand. That family's urge for power, which is itself a natural human thing, which isn't always terrible, was allowed to grow unchecked. The very thing that he's suggesting is the solution was the cause of the problem in the first place. His argument, of course, being that he would do it better, which I mean, is nothing new or novel. An additional critique, and I acknowledge this is sort of weak in the face of the examples he used of people dying of hunger, right? But there's something that feels important to me about society being created through an organic process of each individual making their own choices. For contrast, let's say there's a society where there is no hunger and people have what they need, yet are sort of kept there by force. Something is wrong. Something has been lost. Or at the very least, it's not optimal. To use a very reductionist example, let's say you have a room of people arguing with each other and then somebody walks in with a gun and says, if anyone says anything negative, I'll shoot you. Okay, you have peace. People are getting along, but not really. What would be optimal, what you hope for, even if it's not guaranteed to happen, is all the people in that room, through their quarreling and experiences with each other, learn and grow, become people that are great and don't see the need to quarrel. And then the peace that forms from that is really special and beautiful and enduring. Something actually has been systemically gained. This is a classic Attack on Titan dilemma of who gets to decide. And while the king certainly is powerful, he's still pretty immature in terms of his awakening into humanity and beauty and value of life, etc. Which is perfectly reasonable given the fact that he's like four days old. I know this is going long. I'm sorry. There's so much I can say about this. I also don't think inequality in itself is a bad thing. Needless suffering and destruction is a bad thing. Inequality is not that necessarily. Imagining a perfectly fair system, certain things just have higher yield. Certain choices are better than other choices. Along a particular axis, there are multiple axes too. Resources and time and life are limited and at all given moments, you're allocating skill or time points and that will yield different results for different people. It's not necessarily intrinsically a bad thing. It goes wrong when there is some unfairness or where it's not that input, not the work, not the effort, not the individual striving that leads to distortions in that relationship. So there's inequality based not on goodness and merit and effort, etc., but based on like force, which is the very thing that would happen given this sort of top-down society. I feel like there's a distortion I often see in the way this is presented, where it's like, there is inequality, inequality is bad. So the answer to the inequality is to give people extreme power to come in and stamp out the the inequality. But actually what you're doing is you're feeding inequality. You are giving power to a system that can make outcome more arbitrary and based less on positive qualities that you would be okay leading to inequality. I definitely understand the appeal, like to give credit to it. At heart is, is a noble aim. It's like people have what they need. No one suffers, right? But it cannot be based on a fantasy conception of the world. And you don't want to destroy or undermine positive processes to like force in a snapshot of what you want because you will almost undoubtedly make things worse. From experience, this is a very difficult argument to make because like I'll say all this and it just sounds dry. There's so much caution involved. It induces basically a feeling of paralysis and how to act and how to improve things. Compare that with like, people are suffering. It's really hard to beat that with long, complex, cold analysis. All right, Nedero, I feel like getting back something. Do you get about so getting back something here? This is, you're talking like a child here. Okay, that's honest. Mm -hmm. That cannot possibly have any terrible effects. Smush crows. Eagles. Uh, okay. Mixed feelings. Such mixed feelings. Noble, but... He just sits down. That's exactly what I wanted. Alright, <laughs> 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 
I sort of agree with that. Even taking out the ant thing, he's suffering from the problem of not understanding the full nuance of things and a very, very powerful sense of conviction that he knows the answer, which is dangerous. There are so many unknown unknowns for him, but he still feels like he's this benevolent, perfect leader and just do what I say, everything will be great, which you see, you find this in life. I think everyone suffers from this to some degree. There's a very powerful pull in the, the self-centric nature of thinking one has all the answers. It doesn't really bear itself out well when actually applied. I mean, like to make a very simple argument, when was the last time you had a problem involving multiple people or multiple moving parts and were able to engineer just in your head and execute their action a plan that you finished and everything went perfectly exactly as you anticipated? Now take that and multiply that by 9 billion people on the planet and about a trillion other factors like the weather, animal migration patterns, who, who knows what other black swans, each person sort of doing what they want, things you never could have imagined beforehand. It's a lot. The king kind of reminds me of myself in high school. If I'm Netero, I'm getting conviction from this. I'm hearing him talking. I'm like, okay, no, this is not... I don't want to destroy you either, but I can't let this happen. Uh, this organization, this is going to be a thing. I don't... I also, it's weird that Netero answers to people. Why? What leverage do they have? You need to make a decision one way or the other and be convicted in it. And that's part of the struggle so far for Netero. The king not suffering from that at the moment. The king, even the king may have underestimated a bit. We can control time, or one's perception of time, apparently. And in a, ver in a sense, this is also a betrayal of this vote of confidence that we don't need to fight, which I kind of would have liked to have seen explored more before jumping into this just death attack. And it looks, it looks amazing. It looks glorious. So grateful right now. So grateful! <laughs> Thank you, martial arts. Oh, they summoned a, a god. He's gone all the way and back. 100 type Guanyin Bodhisattva. Wow. And all of this has already happened. I'm gonna hit you with the hand of God. I see little material particles there, but I know this is... I don't know how much damage it did, but I know it didn't do that much damage. And it would be humiliating if the king just shakes this off. Slowly making his way over there. <laughs> you could say that. Oh yeah, you could say that too. I got this thing on my arm now. Yep. It's complicated, it's difficult, I don't really know what I'm rooting for anymore. What? what this all means. And I mean it in the best possible way. It's so much more than either side. Like I think I said last episode, there's something bigger at stake, like the most beautiful elements of humanity in essence. This is not a new thought for this arc, but I'm hit with a much more profound appreciation of its depth. From the beginning, this has been a war of human versus beast. But what's so cool about that is they're both elements of humanity. It's the beast, animal-like, DNA-based, pure, instinctual drive form of humanity, which is not itself bad. It's our foundation versus what you might call a higher extension of humanity's capabilities, where we have the cognition to separate a bit from our, our more base desires, can understand things beyond our immediate self, can see a bigger picture beyond what our instincts are screaming at us to do, can appreciate beauty and goodness, even if those things are not directly to our benefit in a simple way of thinking about things. The thing is, I think if you really go deep into it, they're one and the same. Like the cognition that's formed from humanity is not somehow an accident or like a godly creature came down and waved its magic wand and gave us cognition for reasons. The cognition serves a very important purpose. It actually ends up probably being better for our, our survival. Both sides operate for survival, but in very different playing fields. Like the instinctual, the impulse, that is to ensure a minimum amount of survivability. So like you need to eat. Things that don't have an urge to procreate have long been weeded out of the gene pool. You should have a sense of self and a desire to stay alive, even if it requires struggling and fighting to do so. However, that lived to an extreme by everyone is total catastrophe and annihilation. It's probably that higher thinking that is the outer boundary of that, the ceiling, whereas the survival instinct is the floor. Actually, this is weird to throw in here, but I just realized it falls into a same idea pattern I've been thinking about a lot, where there are sort of two domains of function. One that protects the minimum, but is not a maximum. An example I've used previously for this is the law. The law is really useful, really important. You need the law to protect from 
catastrophe. The law is like a basic minimum level of survival. The law is not optimal for every individual. Another thing that falls into this category is education. I've made it very clear how I feel about education. It serves a very important function. It's a minimum. It's like you can live in society, you can survive, you can be successful by doing these basic steps we've laid out for you. Education is not optimal for a lot of people. The answer, I think, is not one side or the other. It's a hybrid of all this and the best elements of, of each. It's thinking about yourself in the immediate moment, but also in the long term, which in a very real sense is also thinking about your DNA and your progeny. What's probably best for any one person long term is living in the best world possible, which requires personal restraint and sacrifice and empathy and all those things we've come to value. So it's not like it's disconnected from the animal thing. It is the animal thing, just in a very different time frame for situations where there is no current pressing game over event occurring for you, which currently is most of us. Trying to gain allies? Interesting that he phrased that in terms of Pido. Maybe falling on deaf ears. Yeah, yeah. He says while giving him side eye. Not testing you or anything. Feel free, <laughs> feel free to answer as you see fit. Was the side eye okay. Poof left alone. Bizarre. It gets more and more lonely. There's definitely a message here. So beautiful, so elegant. Glamorous. I like how they're both looking at each other with side eye. It's a lot of subtext. A great way to lie is to, to phrase it only in terms of the truth. It really destroyed the ground. Ouch. Okay, he made him bleed. You cut his lip. Hmm. But it, I don't need to anticipate it. I can just shrug it off. This Genji game is already over. It's cute. I hear stand there with your god. I'm gonna try again, huh? Can you do it better this time? Like a thousand times better? You don't have 25 years this time. Just skip the second hand entirely. Double slap! <laughs> I think the mistake has already been made. I think the match is decided. I was wondering how he was going to beat the time delay thing, and it turns out he just... He doesn't need to. It's horrible. All of your life and ambitions and aims. You wore your favorite shirt for this. Then he sits down again. Ah. Okay, this is now an ego battle, it feels. Even before the duds that these two attacks were. I think this was the right move from the beginning. I think now he's sort of in a place where it's hard to go back into conversation because he's lost all leverage. At this point, he goes back into conversation. It's just going to be the king lecturing him, or that's how it might feel. I think the actual way to beat the king, though, it's tough because he's so convicted in what he's saying. And sometimes smart people are the best preservers of their own stupidity because anything you throw at them to reveal a flaw in their thinking can be easily overcome with another argument. That's the intellectual trap of the strong mind. But at this point, it seems like a much more sound option than trying to god slap him. Sometimes you can't slap sense into people, amazingly. <laughs> oh, yeah. How many hands you got left? 100 hands? Consider it for a sec. Oh, he does want to know his name. Well chosen. Weird, weird gambit. What's the play here exactly? I'm struggling to understand. What do you gain to this point by making the king fight? Unless this is really an ego obstacle and Netero just can't accept physical defeat, it's obvious that he's been defeated physically. Is it trying to elicit some kind of negative thing from the king to show him he's not as wise and benevolent as, and in control as he thinks he is? Is it an attempt to gain this allegiance that can come through respect from fighting like we saw with Yupi? I'm not sure. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
He said it directly. The country did a lot for him, even though he never won. Is he just like copying an element of what Netero is doing? He's also got hands. Or maybe Netero's power works, or he has a power that works better when the opponent is attacking. I think the real battle between Netero and the king has already ended. <laughs> Sorry, narrator. Unless you're referring to an intellectual battle, which maybe. Maybe this fight brings out some, some new thing in the king that he hadn't considered. That feels like the only way out of this. Slowly weakening his resolve in himself and his own plan. God, it would be so amazing if this arc just ends and Dragon Ball Z style, speaking of which, <laughs> the king and the royal guard are just like cast members. That would be such a crazy twist that I would welcome. Because like I said, it's gone. It's over. This whole, we're going to destroy the ants because they're these vile creatures. They're human enough and the humans are ant enough that all that's gone out the window. It's just going to be about which side of thinking prevails as opposed to which side of species prevails. Mm -hmm.